In order to understand multiplying and dividing ra radical expressions, we have to recall how to work with algebraic expressions, uh, particularly binomials, how to multiply binomials. Um, the first example I've got here is x plus 2 times x plus 3. And hopefully you learned a pattern to multiply this, but um, if you didn't, you can just use the distributive law. and you also may remember an acronym, FOIL, which will help you. So FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. So let's do the first product there, the x times the x. That gives you x squared. The outer, the O, is x times 3. So that gives you 3x. The inner is 2 times x. That's the I. And the L in FOIL is the last so that's the 2 times the 3, and that gives you 6. And in this example, there are a couple of like terms, and we can combine them. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, there sometimes will be a couple of pairs of like terms. Uh, sometimes there won't be any like terms. Um, Let's take a look at another example, which is going to be very important, especially when we get to dealing with um, dividing or with uh, fractions that have uh, radical expressions in them. So x minus 4 times x plus 4. So again, if we use FOIL, the f, the first, is x squared. The o is plus 4x. The i, the inner, is minus 4x. And the l is minus 16. And in this case, the plus 4x and the minus 4x cancel out altogether, leaving us with just x squared minus 16. Now, since what we're left with is a binomial difference, and each of the terms in the binomial is a perfect square, x squared is obviously a perfect square, and 16 is a perfect square, this has a special name, and it's called difference of squares. And it's an incredibly important pattern for this section. So the x plus 4 and the x minus 4, they also have a special name. When the binomials look almost identical, except one has a minus and one has a plus, they are called conjugates. So when you multiply a pair of conjugates, you end up with this difference of squares pattern, and we have to keep that in mind. So let's just start with some basic examples involving radicals. Uh, let's say we have 2 plus root 3 times 3 plus 2 root 3. So just go ahead and multiply it in exactly the same way we multiply the two binomials using FOIL. So the F, the first product, is 2 times 3, which is 6. The O is 2 times 2 root 3, which is 4 root 3. The I, the inner product, is root 3 times 3 which is 3 root 3. And the L, the last product, is root 3 times 2 root 3. Now, when you multiply the root 3's, you get 3. And then multiply that by 2, and you get 6. So here we actually end up having uh, a pair of like terms that we can combine. The 6 and the 6 we can combine to make 12. The 4 root 3 and the 3 root 3 combine to make 7 root 3. All right, let's take a look now at a difference of squares pattern. We'll take a pair of conjugates, 5 minus root 7 and 5 plus root 7. And instead of using FOIL, we'll just go straight to the final result, which is the difference of squares. So when you have this pattern and you recognize it as a pair of conjugates, all you have to do is square the first term, in this case 5, and you get 25. Then you write a minus, and you square the second term, which is the root 7. When you square root 7, you simply get 7. And this leaves us with 25 minus 7, which is 18, which is very nice because we started off with two expressions, both of which had radicals. And we ended up with an expression that didn't have any radicals at all. And this is why this is such a useful um, property, and we're going to use this uh, extensively later. So let's take a look at a, another example. 
this one involving um, a fraction or division if you like. Let's say we have 6 over root 3. Now in some contexts it's alright to have a radical in the denominator but in other contexts it's not considered simplified to have a radical in the denominator. So the question becomes how do you simplify this and the technique is known as rationalizing the denominator. Right now the denominator is root 3 which is irrational. We'd like to make the denominator rational so we have to rationalize the denominator. Now we're going to take advantage of a property we've used many many times in order to create an equivalent fraction. You can create an equivalent fraction for the purposes of adding and subtracting fractions let's say by simply multiplying by one, but not just any old one. You multiply by something divided by itself. In this case we're going to multiply by root 3 over root 3. The reason for that is because if you multiply the root 3 in the denominator by root 3 you will effectively be squaring it and you will create a rational number, in this case 3. The numerator becomes 6 times root 3 and sometimes, not always, there will be some simplification or factoring that has to take place after this. In this case the 6 in the numerator obviously has a common factor of 3 with the denominator so we can cancel out that common factor and we're left with 2 root 3. So we started with something that was a fraction 6 over root 3 and you know we ended up with something that it, in the intermediate step was a fraction that did not have a radical in the denominator uh, and that might be where you stop in many cases, but in this case we actually created something that wasn't a fraction at all. Or if you like it has a denominator of 1, which is definitely rational. So 4, let's take a look at the fourth example here. Let's say we have a binomial in the numerator, 4 plus 2 root 2, all over root 2. So again, we want to rationalize the denominator. We're focused just on the denominator. So we're going to multiply this by root 2 over root 2 and you have to be careful that the entire numerator gets multiplied by root 2. So it's a binomial, so you're going to have two separate products, 4 times root 2 plus 2 root 2 times root 2. Now when you multiply the root 2's you get 2 times that coefficient 2 becomes 4. All over on the bottom we have root 2 squared which is simply 2. And once again here we have a common factor there's a factor of 2 that you can pull out of the numerator leaving you with 2 root 2 plus 2 and so these 2's can be cancelled out and you end up with 2 root 2 plus 2 and once again I've chosen examples where the denominator cancelled out completely it's not always going to be the case. Let's move on now to a more complicated denominator so let's say we have 6 over root 13 minus root 7. So the initial reaction when you see this and you don't know what technique to use is to multiply the bottom by one of the radicals, root 13 or root 7. Especially if it was a binomial that had only one radical. Let's say it was you know, an integer like 10 minus root 7. The trouble is if you multiply that by root 7 you're not going to get rid of the radicals because root 7 times root 7 will give you uh, an integer 7 but you'll have the other term in the binomial multiplied by root 7 and so you'll still have a radical in the bottom so you cannot use the technique that we were using in the previous example so what do you do? Here's where you take advantage of the difference of squares pattern. If you multiply the top and bottom here by the conjugate of the denominator which is root 13 plus root 7, then the denominator is going to become rational because we will end up with a difference of squares on the bottom. So the first term, root 13, when you square it gives you 13, minus the second term squared, so root 7 squared is 7. And so 13 minus 7 is just an integer 6. And in this case, Again, I've given you an example where the denominator is going to cancel with the numerator. Instead of multiplying out the, the 6 times the root 13 plus root 7, I'm sort of looking ahead and I know that it's going to cancel out with the denominator. And so 
the 6 and the 13 minus 7, which is 6 in the denominator, cancel out, and I'm left with simply root 13 plus root 7. All right, uh, let's go on to one where we have a binomial in both the numerator and the denominator. So let's say we have 3 root 5 plus 2 over 2 root 5 plus 1. So again, you know, you see that root 5, and it appears in both numerator and denominator. It's very tempting just to multiply top and bottom by root 5. But if you multiply the bottom by root 5, the 2 root 5 times root 5 is indeed 10, an integer. But you'd still have the plus 1 times root 5. So you'd have 10 plus root 5. So you really know better off. So instead, we're going to multiply by the conjugate, which is 2 root 5 minus 1. And you have to multiply top and bottom by the same thing, because all you want to do is create an equivalent fraction. You don't want to change the value of this fraction. So on top is going to be a little tricky. You've got a binomial times a binomial. On the bottom, it's very easy, because you've intentionally created a difference of squares pattern. So all you have to do is square the first term, 2 root 5. So 2 root 5 squared is 2 squared, which is 4 times root 5 squared, which is 5, so 4 times 5 is 20, minus 1 squared, which is 1. So the denominator is a nice integer, 20 minus 1, which is 19. The top, let's use FOIL, so 3 root 5 times 2 root 5, there's your F. The 3 times the 2 is 6, root 5 times root 5 is 5, 6 times 5 is 30. The O, the outer, is 3 root 5 times minus 1, so that's minus 3 root 5. The i, the inner, is 2 times 2 root 5, which is plus 4 root 5. And the l is plus 2 times minus 1, so that's just minus 2. And we have some simplification we can do on the top. We've got the two integers, 30 minus 2, so that gives you 28. And then minus 3 root 5 plus 4 root 5 gives you plus root 5. Right, plus 1 root 5, you don't need to write in the 1, and all over 19. And here there's nothing that's going to cancel out. You're just left with 28 plus root 5 over 19. And the goal here, remember, was to create a fraction with a rational denominator, which we have. Um, you might have some questions about the numerator and the style of it, whether root 5 plus 28 is OK. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's no hard and fast rules. 28 plus root 5 or root 5 plus 28, either way is fine.